Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news, the implications of the ongoing uncertainty over the mechanism that enables ESCOM to claw back unexpected but prudently incurred expenses are slowly starting to emerge. Terence Creamer joins me to take us through some of these issues. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. How has this uncertainty uh, arisen and when is it likely to be cleared up? Well, when it's going to be cleared up is unclear because it's in the uh, court process, it's a legal uh, dispute. In August last year, the High Karting High Court found the regulatory clearing account or the process followed by NURSA uh, in the latest regulatory clearing account uh, dispensation or decision to be uh, unlawful. They said it was irrational, unfair and unlawful. And that uh, has now thrown the use of that mechanism, which Eskom uh, is, you know, under normal circumstances entitled to, if they've either, uh, uh, over or under recovered, the RCA allows either the consumer to get back from Eskom if they've over recovered, or for Eskom to recover what they've under recovered uh, through that mechanism. Um, and it felt like, you know, it, it had been used twice, um, and it had felt like we had now an established sort of track record but it was taken um, to the courts by a grouping from the Eastern Cape, uh, energy intensive users, and the court found that uh, NERSA, the, the way NERSA carried it out, as they, they declared it to be unlawful. So that means, and subsequently NERSA has said that they will be appealing that, and they've got a, an argument as to why they don't uh, feel that the, uh, the approach was unlawful. But in the meantime, they're not adjudicating any further RCA applications from ESKIM. Now, apparently two had already been submitted. And that meant that when the tariff uh, determination uh, period approached, which was earlier this year, uh, a nurse had to make a decision as to what uh, ESKIM should get from April 1. Uh, that decision was 2.2% for the year. Uh, now, this is under a, the third multi-year price determination period, which, uh, which runs for five years. And we know that Eskom was given uh, eight times five, or eight percent times five years increases. But because of the two RCA um, adjustments, uh, there's a, they, they have to cater for that rebasing that takes place within uh, the tariff. And therefore, what was only due to them without any further RCA adjustments was 2.2 percent, which is what has been given. Now, Eskom um, has, was given a window of opportunity by the regulator to approach it if they felt there were going to be liquidity constraints. Eskom has looked at that option, as I understand, and may still approach, um, but, it's, but they feel like if they do, because of the scrutiny on the processes that NERSA is carrying out, that that's probably also going to face legal challenge. And the clock is ticking because, uh, well, really th this last week, um, they should have been approved, the approval should have been sought in Parliament. Uh, Parliament has to approve so that the, the, the municipalities have certainty on their electricity revenues because uh, while Eskom increase comes in on April 1, from July 1, uh, the municipalities set their, uh, um, uh, their tariffs, which comes into their budgets. So that, that we needed that certainty should have been this month. They have been given a, an extension into April, as I understand it. But whether they use that extension period or not has become unclear. And uh, so what we have for now is a, a tariff increase of 2.2%, which Eskom is saying is, is not adequate and is going to put serious pressure on their liquidity. What are the immediate implications for Eskom? Well, I think uh, operationally Eskom is more stable. Um, as, and, you know, they've brought, it seems, well, definitely their primary energy costs have come under a bit of control because they're not spending that billion rand a month, remember, that diesel bill. So we're not really using the open cycle gas turbines. Their coal uh, costs, those that's another variable that everyone watches closely, also seem to be coming under some sort of control, I think. But there's, there's still, or every year, you have these, these big coal increases. It'll be interesting to see what the final figures are when Eskom reports, but it seem to be coming under control. But uh, th there are um, expenses around buying electricity from the RPPs, uh, the inter independent power producers, plus um, if they sign additional contracts, which still haven't been signed, even though the president said they must in the state of the nation, these, these expenses will rise, but not, I suppose, not during this 
year because those projects still have to be built. But they are rising RPP related costs that they were hoping to recover, to, as I understand it, through the RCA. Um, and that is not now available to them. So uh, the message you're getting, we're getting from ESCOM is that they're looking at the, the framework, the government support framework that was put in place to guarantee the purchases uh, from the RPPs and looking whether they can trigger some of those clauses. So that, that basically that support framework was put in place up to I think a threshold of 200 billion. The government said if ESCOM couldn't meet its obligations, uh, it could then it would then guarantee ESCOM's purchases from RPPs. Now uh, the National Treasury has acknowledged that ESCOM has written to them and has in indicated that they might look at triggering it, but they've said that nothing has been triggered and all options are on the table. Now that's where that delay I think I spoke about earlier about whether uh, taking the tariff to Parliament and getting approval for the Parliament. I think they're, they're looking at a window there as to whether ESCOM reapproaches a nurse to try and get some different dispensation for, for from April 1. Um, but as I said to you earlier, Eskim's not convinced that they're going to get it. So the implication is, once again, we, it's a deja vu all over again sort of situation where you have uh, Eskim either having to resort to the consumer or to the taxpayer. Now in this case they're saying the consumer angle is, is very much close to them because of the uncertainty around the RCA mechanism and their feeling that if they went and approached uh, NURSA directly, maybe even just on RPP costs, they might face a legal challenge uh, or a legal interdict because again it's a, it's a procedural irregularity. But you never know, they, they might get through that. So the consumer angle they feel is being exhausted. So now unfortunately the poor old taxpayer angle, which is the shareholder angle, comes back into play and whether you know, Eskim can try and resort there to getting some sort of government support. Now we must realize governments have already given Eskim a lot of support over the last number of years. There's that 350 billion guarantee framework in place, um, which Eskim is drawing down at an accelerated rate because of these gaps um, from what it can get from the tariff. And it may be a case that, we, that the urgency here is not exactly the next few months. There might be a looking at uh, various processes, allowing the, the legal certainty to be restored around the RCA, um, maybe allowing Eskom or uh, calling on the public um, to allow Eskom to approach NURSA directly around RPPs. But you know, it is getting to a point and, uh, that we saw with the Standard & Poor's S&P Global Ratings this week saying that the liquidity position of Eskom is under, under some stress because they're not able to recover at, uh, from the tariff at the rate that they were expecting. They were saying we're expecting 8% a year. Now we're getting a 2.2% type increase. So look, it's a complicated and it's, it's not clear. It's murky, but ultimately Eskom, as I say, the two levers they've got is the consumer through the tariffs or the shareholder, which is the taxpayer. And I think uh, uh, you know, in ultimately something is going to, uh, one of those two, are going to land up having to pay. What options are being explored to deal with these immediate pressures? Well, I think the, the, there's a task team, a working group that's been set up um, at, with the National Treasury, the Department of Energy and the Department of Public Enterprises. We saw this delay in uh, submitting to Parliament. Uh, so there's a number of options, I think, being explored, which uh, uh, Eskim, um, you know, is probably leading that process, but Treasury is a very key player in there. And I think here yeah, a lot of it relates to, I suppose, Eskom's credibility. Uh, you know, whether it's when it comes, uh, maybe with <laughs> begging bowl and explaining its case, whether people actually believe it. And I think that's one area where Eskom, I think, really needs to work hard to re-establish some sort of credibility, so that when it comes with a real problem, it's not just dismissed. Because I think that's the current uh, default position that when Eskom raises a problem, it's dismissed as uh, Eskom once again, you know, are overhyping it or trying to have another agenda. And the agenda is very clearly in the public imagination, that agenda is doing anything to, uh, you know, to, to squeeze or squash the, the development of RPPs to create space for nuclear. So I think there's a big credibility gap there. And uh, um, I think unless Treasury um, agrees with Eskom and starts speaking the same language and they start singing off the same hen sheet, 
I think it's going to be quite an interesting period. And that was raised by the, um, the ratings agencies. When Eskom's rating was, what was maintained by Standard & Poor's, but uh, they did put it on negative watch. And the part of that negative watch is whether, even though they think that government will come to its aid because of the importance of Eskom and the ownership being government, uh, they're saying you know, th that, the, um, th that, that the certainty around that has diminished somewhat. There seems to have been a, ga a gap has de developed between government and Eskom that unless that, that sort of wound is, is mended or there's been some stitching up or suturing up between that relationship, I think there is a risk. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.